Can we get started, that's all right? Um, yeah, this is uh, my talk about the uh, Drupal Ajax framework. My name is James Hall. Um, I work for CTI Digital up in sunny Manchester. Um, yeah, let's get started then. So, uh, here's some of the topics that I'm going to be running through in my talk. Um, first of all, why, why I think you should use the Drupal Ajax framework. Uh, some of the benefits of it. Um, then I'm going to look at an overview of some of the broader concepts behind the framework and how it works. Um, then I'm going to start looking at how you can use Form API to set up uh, Ajax requests and then uh, alter parts of the form uh, without a full page refresh. Um, outside of Form API, we'll look at some other ways to trigger an Ajax request. Um, then the all important graceful degradation, so what happens when JavaScript switched off and how the framework supports that. Um, then the concepts of Drupal Ajax commands, what they are, what they do, and how we can use them. Um, and then, yeah, some of the new stuff, in the new cool stuff in Drupal 8. Um, and then finally, some questions if anyone's got any. Uh, for each of, I'm basically just going to be running through a number of different examples, starting off kind of basic, uh, and then just kind of, as we're progressing through the presentation, it's getting a little bit more advanced. For each example, I'm going to have a, a little animated GIF that will just show you what the, the output is to the user, and then we'll go through a couple of code examples. So there's going to be a Drupal 7 example and a Drupal 8 one. We'll spend a bit of time looking at the differences, um, what you've got to look out for when you're migrating from 7 to 8. Okay, so uh, on to why I think you should use Drupal Ajax. Uh, well, I don't think I need to sell Ajax to anyone here, but it is pretty cool. Um, and also, if you use the framework, you can have Ajax with, uh, with no JavaScript. Um, I, I like JavaScript as much as the next developer, but uh, it's pretty cool, but you don't need to write a single line of JavaScript to, to Ajax enable your applications. Um, graceful degradation comes as a feature of the framework, which is, which is pretty cool. Uh, it, as long as you do things right, you'll get that for free. Uh, it's extensible, so if it's, you know, if it's not something in core that you want to do, then the chances are you're going to be able to extend it to, uh, to satisfy your requirements. Uh, it's reusable, you can package it up into your modules, use it on other projects, or contribute it back to the community. And finally, if anyone is familiar with Drupal behaviours, um, and you've extended Drupal behaviours to write your JavaScript in your Drupal projects, then uh, this integrates with Drupal, uh, the Ajax framework. So, Essentially, if you wrote a, a behavior that attaches some, uh, something to an event on a particular element within the page, um, if there's an Ajax request that replaces that element, um, ordinarily you would lose the, the event handler, but um, because of the integration between Drupal behaviors and the Ajax framework, it will attach again for you straight away, and you don't need to do anything. Um, <coughs> so here's like my, my overview of like what's going on. Um, so you've got your server on the left, and you've got the client browser on the right-hand side. Uh, so you use something within the API uh, to, to generate um, what the docs refers to as a, a trigger. So this could be uh, a form element or just a link. Um, that will then get sent to the client. Um, for the most part, it will get sent via the uh, Drupal, Drupal settings variables, basically. Um, and that's received by the Drupal Ajax library, which is the ajax.js. Um, it will take this, these instructions, which are basically saying, take this element and make it trigger an Ajax request. Um, when it triggers that Ajax request, it will go to a particular endpoint on the server, and it will be asking for some instructions as to what to do. So the callback will say, right, uh, we've received this request. Uh, do something on the page. So that will either be uh, you can, for example, set some CSS on an element or replace a certain replace a, some content within a certain wrapper. Um, those commands go back to the AJAX.js, it interprets those, those commands, uh, and then it carries out the action for you. So, that might seem pretty abstract, so let's move on to some examples. Uh, so, here's my, my first example. Um, pretty amazing. Uh, so, uh, anyway, so yeah, you can see what's going on. Someone is selecting from a drop down, uh, and yeah, the page is getting updated. 
uh, with the, the number that they selected. Um, as you can see by the, the little loading icon, there's no, <coughs> no page refresh going on there, so that's all being done over XHR. Um, so what's going on behind the scenes there? So I probably should have said this before, you do need some familiarity with, with Form API to sort of these examples to make much sense. But um, yeah, so at the top we have uh, Form Builder callback, um, mostly standard Form API stuff. Uh, you've got, got your title, uh, type select, and then you've got the options one, two, and three. Um, and the key bit here is the hash Ajax key on that array. Um, so in this example, we're specifying three options. Um, the only one that's actually mandatory is the first one, but we'll, we'll come to why that is later on. Uh, so we've got the callback, which is uh, for Drupal 7, it's ordinarily just a, just a string name of your function. Um, and we've also got the feedback wrapper. So the feedback wrapper is, relates to um, the ID of an element on your page. Um, and also we've got the method which is append. Now, as you saw from the example, uh, every time someone clicked on the drop down, you'd see a new thing added to the element. So say you've selected number, whatever. Um, if I didn't add method append, the first time that request went over, it would just replace the, the wrapper and there'd be nothing to replace the next time someone selected something. So by default, the method is, is replace. So it's worth bearing that in mind. Um, and then below that, we've actually got the, the markup, which will be used to wrap the, the content that comes back from the server. So it's within that div feedback wrapper that you actually get the you've selected number X. So, yeah, like I said, the callback relates to a PHP function. Um, what you see below there, and that's, um, that gets past uh, the form API form and form state. Um, and that will contain... Uh, that will, the form state will contain the values that have just been selected by the user. So down here I'm checking to see if um, the number element has got any input. If it has, I'm taking it, I'm constructing, uh, I'm, I'm taking the number and I'm constructing a string, you selected number, and returning that. So the important thing to note here is that in uh, Drupal 7 you can just return a string and that's, that's absolutely fine. In Drupal 8 things are a little bit different. Um, so probably the main difference really is that you're you're probably going to have your Ajax callback within inside a class. Um, so you'll need to provide a a fully qualified um, signature for the for the callback. So um, yeah. So on this one we've got um, like reference to a, a static. So yeah, the most important thing is that the, the function needs to be static, I believe. Um, I think that's right. We might have to check that one. But anyway, um, so yeah, and then the callback function, pretty much the same thing going on apart from using uh, the new call form state interface, get value stuff to get the values. Um, so next example. Um, so this is what uh, sort of dependent drop down thing going on. The first one, someone selecting a category, animal, mineral, and vegetable. Um, and then the second drop down is then altered to <coughs> with options that relate to the, the first category. So pretty standard stuff. Um, so what's going on here is kind of more typical of a sort of examples, example of how people implement logic to alter the form that's returned to the user. So instead of having logic in the callback, what you'll see is um, the actual logic is in the in the form builder callback. So, um, yeah, we've got the category at the top. That's the thing that's triggering the Ajax request. So it's got the Ajax, the hash Ajax key. Um, like before, it's got the callback and the wrapper. The wrapper will come to in a second. Um, and the effects on this one, so there's another option that you can pass along, which is completely optional, which is fade. Um, and that, that relates to how uh, jQuery will replace the effect it will use when it, when it replaces the, the content on the page. So... In this example, we could see if don't think you can quite tell, but the, yeah, so it sort of just fades into view. Um, so below that, we're grabbing the category from the form state values, and then the second drop down, um, it 
it's it's getting its options from this this uh, little utility function here, which I've not included. But basically, it, it takes a category and it will generate a list of options that relate to that, that category that you've given it. Um, and then, most importantly, this element is then wrapped by uh, a div with the ID of selection wrapper, which is the same uh, same ID that you've given to the Ajax key for the previous element. Um, so in the callback, there's really nothing, hardly anything going on. Um, before the callback gets called, the form has been rebuilt. So when you make the Ajax request, <coughs> the form gets rebuilt, um, and that once you made the Ajax request and there's some input in the in the top select, it's already carried out its logic. It's already changed the select time for you. So in the in the Ajax callback, you don't need to do anything because by the time it gets there, the element's already been modified and it contains the updated list of options. So. Um, yeah, so this is kind of typical of what, what you see. I mean, you could, obviously, you could have implemented the logic in the callback, but it's just it's more typical to find it in the form builder. Uh, Drupal 8. I mean, yeah, you can see there's pretty much the same, really, with the exception of the, of the callback. Okay. Um, next example. So we're going to come on to a little bit graceful degradation, degradation here. Um, so we've got form, really simple form, one element, takes a first name, and a submit button. Um, so what you can see is the first time we try to submit it, and we get a validation error, standard form API validation error, it says this field is required. Um, on submitting the form, you get a, a nice little message saying thank you. You see all of this is taking place without any page refresh um, and the messages are getting prepended to the to the form. Um, so what's going on here is that the oh, so I've only got a duplicate example for this. Um, so the submit button has got the Ajax option on it um, and it's saying uh, replace the page uh, the areas on the page to replace with the Content return from um, uh, the callback is, is the personal details wrapper, and as you can see at the top, the whole form is being wrapped by a, a div with the personal details wrapper. So um, the the callback is just returning the entire form. So that means that we've got a wrapper of the entire form, and then when it goes to the callback, it's just checking the entire form back. Um, Validate to standard validate stuff, and on the submit, we've got a message set. So the important thing to notice here is is that um, we haven't had to do anything special with the messages or the validation messages. The Ajax framework will just send them back for you and prepend it to the the wrapper. So that means that when you return it, the uh, person details wrapper will first have the messages inserted, and then it will have the form. The reason this is quite cool for um, this whole process of, of, of the validation callbacks being called and the submit callbacks being called for you is that if I just switch Ajax off on this form, it, it just works. There's nothing, there's nothing you have to do. So for people with JS uh, enabled browsers, the form just works exactly the same, but it's just delivered by a, a full HTTP request. Um, so the framework does help us in both declaration in other ways, but that's, that's one. Um, okay, so some more interesting stuff. So what's what's going on here? We've got a, a username, um, like a sort of mock login form, um, and yeah, you enter your username, and as we're tabbing out of that field, um, it's it's automatically printing out a validation message to say whether or not um, that that username is valid. Probably not a very realistic example, but uh, it's good just to, just to demonstrate some stuff. So yeah, the first two times the wrong username is going in um, and we're putting a red border on the username field and um, we're just printing a little message below just to say that's, that's an incorrect username. So there's a couple of different things going on there. Um, so group 7, uh, we just have the, I think I've not included the password field there yet, so we've just got the username field, um, Ajax keys, got the callback, uh, the event is blur, so it's probably worth noting that by default, um, 
Drupal will trigger the request on change. So for most things, that's fine. When you, you know, when you change the select list, it will change. When you change the value, when you set the radio, or um, for buttons, uh, the default method will be clicked. So it usually just works for that for you. For text input, it's not really so great to have it on change because it will send a request for every every time you, you key up in the field. So um, kind of makes more sense as a fire off the Ajax request when the, when the user tabs out or loses focus of the field. Um, and then following the field, we've just got an empty div, uh, which is user Ajax feedback. Now in the callback, um, what we're doing is we're, we're checking, we're getting uh, the user, the input from the user name field. Uh, then I've got a little utility function which, which I've left out, but that'll go back and check to see if uh, the username is valid. So if it is valid, we're, we're, we've got the... Um, yeah, we're setting the border colour to, to red, no, green, sorry, wrong way around. If it's invalid, we're setting it to red, and we're setting a message to uh, your, your username is not, not valid. Um, and if it is valid, we're setting, we're setting up a message string of nothing, and uh, the border colour is green. Now, instead of returning a string like we have done in the previous Drupal 7 examples, um, what we're doing is we're, we're setting up an array of, of instructions to send back to the browser. So they're pretty self-explanatory. Um, the first one we've got is the Ajax command CSS. Um, this is kind of a wrapper for the jQuery Ajax um, method. So the first option that it takes is, a, is an ID, and then uh, the second is a, an array of key value pairs for CSS properties. So in this one we're saying <coughs> find the edit the, the, the element on the page with the edit user ID and then yeah, set the border colour to either red or green. Um, and then finally we're adding another command which is HTML command um, and yeah we're just sending a string back to that. So that what that's going to do is it's going to replace the, 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 in, yeah, the inner HTML from that div. So um, The return value from this command will be yeah, it's, it's very specific. You need to pass it um, an array, and it's got this uh, type is Ajax, and then the commands is the, the, uh, yeah, the array of commands that we've just constructed. And then, yeah, Ajax looks at JS, so we iterate through each of those commands and then carry them out. So, as you saw before, it will change the border colour for you, and uh, it will insert the, the message into that div. Drupal 8 is a, it's a bit of a change. Um, <coughs> So, yeah, the main thing to, well, there's a couple of things here to, to notice. Well, actually, a, a couple of the most important things first. So, the return value from the callback, um, instead of returning uh, an array now, we now return an Ajax response object. And, um, yeah, to, to send some commands back, we use the add command method on that object. And the, um, the add command method takes... Uh, Ajax command objects, but other than that, it's it's the same principle really. You know, you're still passing along an ID, and uh, yeah, you're still passing an array of CSS properties, um, and then you just return that response. One thing worth looking at here is that the HTML command in this example is taking a render array rather than a string, so that's a, a new feature in Drupal 8. Um, yeah, so you can yeah, use, use render arrays instead. The other thing worth pointing out here, a bit of a side note, is this disable refocus thing on the text input. I'm not sure if it's a bug or not, but um, in Drupal 8, um, when the Ajax response comes back to the browser, if it's a text field, it will try to refocus the element that triggered the request in the first place. Uh, the offshoot of this is that you type into, if you've got it on blur, you type into that text field, tab out, because as soon as it comes back for the response, you get refocused back into your text field. You try to <laughs> tab out again, it does exactly the same thing. It's impossible to leave the text field, basically. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, you can actually pass this disable refocus equals to true. Can I ask a question about the... Uh, absolutely. Um, you've got the commands at the bottom there. So one is essentially to update the CSS 
and the other one is to turn the HTML. Is it possible to, to apply a class, say your CSS may be defining a red border, so could you say apply a class on this element of um, error? Yeah. Is, is that another type of It is. We'll, we'll go through um, a couple of the commands later on, but for that one, I don't think there's a specific command for adding classes to elements, but... Um, can you extend it? You can absolutely extend it, or there's a sort of catch-all useful command called invoke, which right. is like a wrapper for jQuery, basically. So invoke will take, and we've got a couple of examples later on, but invoke will take any uh, uh, jQuery method and an, arg and an array of the property uh, of the arguments that you expect. So you could just pass add class to that and then pass the ID, and that would do the same thing. So generally, you, for the most part, you don't need to actually do any extending. You can invoke sort of kind of yeah, works a lot of the time. Um, right. So, this is probably the most boring <laughs> screen recording in the whole one. Uh, so, we've now um, come to look at other ways. So, so far, up to now, we've just looked at how you can use Form API to set up triggers. And, um, but now we're looking at how, how you could use uh, something outside of Form API and um, yeah, most typical example you see would be a link. So each time you click on this link, uh, there's, a, there's a div below getting updated with a, with a number. Um, pretty groundbreaking stuff. Um, so, and this other example is um, what happens when uh, JavaScript isn't enabled. So, uh, the user is still seeing something, basically. It's not quite as cool, but um, it, it's not breaking completely. So let's just have a look how you, you set that up. Um, so we'll first look at the, the middle function. Um, so that's, that's my page callback. That's what's printing the links onto the page. Um, the first thing you'll see there is we're adding a library to the page. This is really important when you're not using Form API, because when you're using Form API, you'll it will take care of a lot of stuff for you, so it will add the library to the page. If you're circumventing that for whatever reason, then you need to make sure it's on the page, otherwise ajax.js just isn't there to do its, do its thing. Um, the link, hopefully you can see it all. Yeah, so we're, we're going to... We've got a link, uh, href um, is corresponds to the, 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 the page callback that we've, we've got above, um, with the all-important Node.js uh, within the link. Um, I'll come to, come to why that's useful in a second. Um, the class is use Ajax. That, that is a special class. Um, Ajax.js will, when it's loaded on the page, will go through your markup and look for any links that has the, the use Ajax uh, class on it. And if it finds one, it will um, override, prevent the default method, which is um, redirecting to another page, and it will... It will um, do an XHR request to your endpoint that's in the in the href, um, and yeah, following that we've just got um, the wrapper, um, which is uh, AJAX result. Oh, what the hell is that thing below it? <laughs> oh, that's the that's the link. Yeah, yeah, that's the link. Right. Not quite sure. Oh yeah, right. Okay. Uh, so the callback, um, pretty Mickey Mouse stuff. We're just generating a random number. Um, and then within the command, we're saying put the uh, put the content, which is the number, inside of the uh, inside of the div ajax result div. Um, so another thing, when you're outside of form API, uh, you can't just return that array. Um, you need to return it using um, ajax deliver, which will set the correct response headers and return it as a, as a JSON response rather than trying to return it as H, HTML. Um, so, what is Node.js doing then? So, if you look in the, the menu, uh, the hook menu implementation, you can see that it takes a, a parameter um, of the third position uh, and it passes that as an argument to the callback. So, by default, um, it will be passing Node.js as an as a argument to our callback. When ajax.js is run on the page, it will look for any uh, any links that use ajax, and it will replace the Node.js with ajax. 
So this is a really cool way of knowing when you're responding to a request, trying to figure out whether or not it's come from a, from a JavaScript enabled browser or not. Um, so based on the information that's passed to us, we can then differ our response. So um, yeah, so you can see in the callback we've got a bit of logic that says if the mode is Ajax, then we're returning with Ajax deliver. Uh, and if it's not, we're just returning a standard render array and it's just rendered as HTML. So yeah, that's that's a pretty cool I mean, yeah. I think that's a pretty nice feature for free. Um, yeah, it certainly takes a lot of work out of it and I, I think you know it's best practice to be making sure our apps go gracefully uh, degrade. Okay, Ajax links. Um, yeah, so this is the this is the D eight example. Um, obviously the, the root uh, information, you know, how, we, how we define routes in Drupal 8 is completely different. Um, but same principles. Um, same thing going on with the link. I suppose the biggest difference here is that in Drupal 8 you have to use the attached property on your render array to get a library on the page. Um, but other than that, in the callback, pretty much exactly the same thing going on. So yeah, here are some of the other commands basically. So there's a whole heap of commands that, that come in core. Um, in Drupal 7, the easiest way to find them is just uh, have a search for your code base for uh, what, <laughs> what do they start with? Ajax command. So all pre the ones that come in core are all prepended Ajax command. Um, in Drupal 8, probably the easiest way to do it if you've got PHP Storm is to um, yeah, find uh, find the interface, which is the Ajax command interface, and if you PHP and so on, can tell you all the classes to implement that interface. So there's a there's a whole heap uh, in there. Drupal it's got some new cool ones, but yeah, so the ones are, are in both seven and eight. Um, we've got a whole lot of content commands insert, append, append, replace, etc. Uh, CSS stuff. So just adding CSS to an inline element, or you can add it globally into the page. Um, thing I mentioned earlier, which is invoke, which is pretty powerful because you can pretty much call anything in jQuery using that. And yeah, uh, the one you probably don't ever want to use really, which is the alert command. Um, uh, in D8, they've kind of adopted some of the commands that used to be provided by ctools. Uh, so we've got a way of redirecting browser on an Ajax response. Highlight, I'll be honest, I don't actually know what that does. Uh, sounds cool though. Right? Um, scroll top, I'm sure you can imagine what that does. And probably the one that I'm uh, most excited about, which is the modals and dialogue commands. So these, um, yeah, jQuery, some parts of jQuery UI are now in core, um, and we've got the jQuery dialogue, uh, um, which is, uh, yeah, a, a big improvement, I think, on, on the C tools dialogue. Uh, it looks a lot nicer. Uh, and obviously it's, it's maintained elsewhere, which is cool. Um, so just going to look quickly, how much time have I got? John, am I right for a bit? Yeah, okay, cool. So uh, this, is, this is an example of how you can really quickly use modals to, to do cool stuff, coolish stuff in this example, but hopefully you'll see the potential. Two links on the page, uh, we've got modalize node one, which I think I've just clicked. Um, so that was the, the node and the comments form at the bottom. Uh, and we've also got uh, create a new page node. So um, probably the only thing really worth pointing out here is that obviously it's just the content from the page. Um, on the first example, you see the save and preview. They're actually the comment, uh, the buttons that come with the comment form. Um, on the node form, you've got save, publish, unpublish, and preview. That's just the action buttons that you get on, on the node edit add form. So I'm not sure whether it's a good thing or not, but it will uh, the Ajax framework will move those buttons into the into the footer for you. Sometimes I think it might be what you want. It looks it looks nice, but um, so I'll just show you how easy it is to get that up and running. Uh, these are only Drupal eight examples. So the first one we've got a a render array is spitting out two things which are two links. The first one I've just to, just to show you a couple of ways of doing it. Um, <coughs> we've got a link um, and it's it's linking to the the node slash one 
URL. Uh, we've got to use the, the new way of um, yeah, links take a URL object. Um, so the way to get this working in a modal is that the the link should have uh, it should have uh, at least the two yeah the two attributes, which is the class of use AJAX, and then the data dialog type of modal. Um, and yeah, the third one, which is optional, which is a number of arguments that you can pass to jQuery dialog uh, um, objects. So in this case, we say make it 400 pixels high and 700 wide. Um, one thing I didn't point out in the example is what the difference. It wasn't particularly obvious to me originally what the difference between a dialog and a modal was. Um, in jQuery, it's actually just an option on the dialog, so you can say make this dialog a modal. Um, in Drupal, they're, they're two, they're, you can see them as two separate things, but um, essentially the first one has a, has a complete full page overlay. Um, so that's the modal, correct? And the second one that doesn't have a, a grayed out overlay is, uh, is a dialogue. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so that's just to, so that, that, that first render array is essentially spitting out. Um, the markup that you can see below. So in the second one, we're just returning a render array of just markup, constructing the markup ourselves. Um, we can see all the attributes that I've just mentioned. Um, obviously, it's easier to use JSON and code, but we've I've just sort of and and those quotes should be HTML encoded as well, so it should be unquot. Um, but yeah, the only difference between the first and the second one, other than the, the href, is that we're setting a different dialog type of dialog or modal. Um, and finally, you've got to attach the library. So, yeah, you can see it's pretty quick to, you know, start using modals. Um, they might not, they might not be that useful as they are. I mean, in that first example, you just, when you click on the, the save button, it'll redirect you to the sort of the node view page as it does normally. But yeah, but it's easy to, and, and it, it passes when you, so it passes the um, wrapper format as a query, which basically. When Drupal responds, it will only give you the content region. So it takes care of a hell of a lot for you, which is really cool. Um, slightly more uh, advanced example then. So uh, it actually misses the point where I've got an empty input for the employee name. But essentially, we've got the first text field. Type a name in there. Hit the Find Employee button. And it will give me a list of employees. Click on one of those employees, and it will automatically insert the uh, insert their ten minutes, insert their first name, surname, and, and department into there for you. Um, not not really a, a real example, but you, you know you get the idea. Um, so this is kind of using a couple of the things that we've, we've touched on so far. So there's a bit of code here. Sorry. Um, so the first we've got the form order callback. Um, Got the employee name, uh, just standard text field, nothing funny going on there. And then on the, we've got a button directly below it, and um, it's all the stuff we've seen before, with the exception of the limit validations key. Um, this is important if you're using an AJAX request to, uh, sorry, if you're using a button to fire off an AJAX request, then you need to make sure um, that it's it's not really caring about because we've got uh, some required fields below, so. If, if I didn't put that on there, it's going to come back with loads of messages saying, "Oh, you need to, you need to put some values into these fields." So that's just basically telling Form API we're not we're not trying to submit the form; we're just doing something else. Um, and yeah, the first thing I've, I've omitted the uh, the other fields. <coughs> so uh, in the callback, what's going on? So we're setting up a AJAX response, and we're using a utility function um, to get some. Get a list of employees that match that name. Um, so that's coming back with a, an unordered list of employees that you saw with links in there. Um, we're attaching the. I'm not sure what's going on here. Oh, I had to manually attach the dialog library for this to work. I think when you're doing it with links, it will do that for you. But um, in this example, I had to explicitly ask for the library to be included. And then instead of uh, the framework working its magic, uh, I've had to 
So when the, the button's pressed, the response is coming back saying, open a, mo open a modal uh, and put this content in it and make it 600 pixels wide. So you put the name in, the click on the button, it comes back. List of links of matching names uh, in the modal for you. So uh, there's that utility function. Uh, you can see that it's, it's just taking the name. Um, it's finding employees from another function. It's iterating over the results and, and generating a, a list of links. Um, these links have got the use Ajax class and um, we're passing the employee ID as a parameter to this root. Okay, and then we're returning that. So I hope you're all following still. Um, so that root is defined here. Um, and what the hell? Yeah. So each of those links is hitting up this root. Uh, and that route is then going on this callback. So open the modal, it's got a list of links, click on that link, it's making yet another Ajax request. That Ajax request is falling into here. It's using this utility function to get the full details of the employee. From that, we're then sending back a load of commands saying, and this is the invoke command, saying uh, use a jQuery val method to set the value of first name, last name, department, to the things that have been returned from our API. And then finally, we're passing along the closed mod modal dialog command. So, that's what's going on there. Any, any questions about that one? It's a little bit, a bit more going on there. Yeah? Uh, when you set the width for the modal, you just passed in a number, but you said that it was in pixels. Yeah. Does that mean you can't pass in any other unit? Uh, you know what? I'll have to have a look at the jQuery UI docs, I think. Yeah. Maybe. It's strange that it takes a unitless. Uh, yeah, I would assume that it, it only takes. It's rubbish. Yeah, it's really rubbish. Uh, yeah, it can be worth looking at. Maybe maybe it just takes pixels by default. Maybe if you pass a, a unit, it'll override that. Not not too sure. Um, right. Put my time up. Five minutes. Cool. Right. Last two slides then. <coughs> Thanks for sticking with me. Uh, so, extending the framework. It's actually really, really simple. Um, so those uses, those functions that we saw earlier on, that Ajax command, so here's, it, this is taken from core. This is the, the alert command. Um, it just returns an array, just says what the command is, which is alert, and then anything following that will be the parameters that are passed to the command for you. Um, so in Drupal 7, you don't have to use these helper functions to return those arrays. Obviously, you will do, because it's easier. Um, but you could just pass the array if you like. Now how that matches up to what's in the JavaScript is um, the Ajax uh, Ajax.js will be looking for um, a method that extends wait for it, Drupal by Ajax the prototype.commands. Uh, so if it finds uh, alert, uh, an object that extends a class of, or method that extends um, commands with that name, then it will pass, uh, yeah, it will instantiate that function, and that's where our logic is. So you can see here it's just simply opening alert. The parameters that we uh, pass, so the text parameter, will be uh, properties of the response object that gets passed to that. Um, so yeah, you can just see that it's, it's text and we're, we're not passing title. Drupal 8, uh, a little bit more long-winded, obviously. Um, so, yeah, your, the class has to extend command interface, and by doing that, you have to implement render. Um, but render is just returning the same array. So, it's, it's still pretty simple. Um, and differences on the JavaScript side, um, so instead of... Uh, yeah, <laughs> the structure has changed a little. So, instead of... Um, Ajax prototype commands, it's now Drupal Ajax commands the prototype, which I think is sounds more proper, but I'm not really sure. Uh, okay, I think that's that's me. Any questions? At all? Go for it, yeah. Uh, DH specifically, 
because of all the, there's a lot of jQuery dependent looking stuff going on in there. Yeah, massively, yeah. And given how easy it is and, and possibly encouraged these days, it is to disable jQuery. Yeah. Especially if you want to. Uh -huh. Does this just all fall apart if you do that, or is there a... Absolutely. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, it's slightly coupled with, with jQuery, unfortunately. Um, and I, I do think, really, sort of one of the downsides of, of using the Ajax frameworks is just kind of for, force you into sort of weird ways of, of working. Because you're not really writing any JavaScript, you're forced to do all your logic on the server, which sometimes it's, un, it's inefficient to do it on the server, it's better to do it on the front end. So. Are there any kind of siloed parts of that? Ajax framework that, that could work without jQuery as long as you know which bits do depend and which bits don't, so you can still benefit from some mm -hmm. of it. Or uh, so, I mean, in theory, you could, uh, you know, you can use whatever you want in your custom commands. Mm -hmm. That's up to you. But the actual, uh, the actual requests will be delivered using, unless you know, obviously, you can override parts of uh, of the. The, yeah, the, the framework. So I suppose you know I don't know what it is exactly, but Drupal dot Ajax dot request. Maybe you could you could override that and, and slot in uh, something else. I suppose. So yeah, you could override it maybe globally. I have to have a look at it. So good question, though, mate. So in D7, you've got the examples module, which includes a lot of full API stuff in it, including some Ajax mm -hmm. pages. You've got the same in D8. Uh, no. Anyone know? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, a lot of this, <laughs> a lot of this stuff will just be what I've just gone through today. Is yeah. you know, you'll find find good examples in there. Cool. Yeah. One question about uh, form validation. You showed the example when you uh, change the focus to another uh, text element, and the, in the background that was a. Uh, uh, Ajax code. Yeah. Um, you showed the, an error message, but I didn't see the example where you changed the state of the form to whether it's valid or not, or where this. Oh, uh, so that was um, yeah. So that's that was just standard form API stuff. So if you can find that. Okay. So the error message, I saw the uh, color, but I don't see what would happen if when you actually submit the form. Then. So that was submitting the form. Um, the first time I go through this, um, I don't, I don't, I didn't provide a. Uh, yeah, oh, there it is. Uh, one minute. Uh, so yeah, I submit the form um, without a value in that field, and that just comes back with a validation message. Uh, I'm not having to because that's standard form API stuff because I've got a required. Oh right, sorry mate. Right. <coughs> Right. That's that's a very good point. Yeah. So it would be better practice to have actually had that logic in uh, in a validation callback, and then um, you can on form state is a method to form get errors, I suppose. Okay. So you could have checked to see if there was a, a some validation flagged against that field. So yeah, it would have been better to, for graceful degradation. It would have been better to have moved that logic into the validation callback for sure. Yeah. Cool. I think that